You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to Live and Lead for Impact. I'm Kirsten Ross Vogel, your host and team performance pro, and this is episode 304. Today, I have a super fun guest. I know you're going to love her. She's a CPA, but you're not going to be able to tell. I'm sorry, is that right? <laughs> She's high energy. I'm so looking forward to our talk. She is Shauna, the tax goddess, and she is a CPA, MTAC, CTS, CTC, Tax Goddess, a highly sought after certified public accountant and founder of Tax Goddess Business Services, PC, established in 2004. Tax Goddess is a global team of 65 plus specialists that uses plain language, not tax code. We love that to help business owners, investors and entrepreneurs create plans of action to increase the business owner's bottom line, reduce costs, significantly reduce taxes, increase cash flow and perform what if scenario options so that owners know what decisions to make and which paths are best suited to their particular situation. Welcome, Shauna. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm so excited to have you. And, you know, as I read all that you do, I'm glad for that intro because a lot of this stuff is not what I think of when I think of CPA. I think more, like it sounds like you're also performing like some CFO kinds of duties, too, and really going the extra mile for your clients. And I think that's what you're going to tell me. But yet, <laughs> let me know what's the impact you're making in the world. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Well, yeah, my specialty as a CPA. So there are, according to Google, 660,000 CPAs in the entire U.S. And so a CPA can do a ton of different things, right? They could be a CFO, they could be an auditor, they could be a tax preparer, you know, whatever it is. My specialty in that world is actually tax strategy. So this year in counting, we've saved our clients over $740 million in taxes. So is that my, no. <laughs> oh, little, little things, little things. I'm trying to hit a billion before December. So, if, you know, anybody wants what? to lower their taxes, let us know. But yeah, get working on it. So really what ends up happening is it is my job as a CPA to make you look poor in the eyes of the IRS, right? So keep all your cash, keep it with you and not with the government. So that's definitely the specialty from our end. That is a really good nutshell way to boil it down. Like that yeah. sounds, yes. The cash <laughs> here. Like looking poor, but keeping their money. Yeah. The, cool. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So what experiences motivated you to make this impact? Oh, I love it. Well, so very, very, very long story short, right? Little redheaded Shauna, definitely feel like a little fire breathing dragon at this point about it. But at the time, little redheaded Shauna, I saw my mom, we were having breakfast at the kitchen table, right? And she was open in the mail doing her thing. I was reading and she basically, you know, physically threw her chair back from the table. And she's a very stoic woman. I've never, ever seen her get angry. I've never, ever experienced anything like that. And so, of course, you know, silence, crickets, like what's going on? What's happening? You know, are you okay? She said, yeah, the IRS wants more money. She had received an IRS notice. And my mother is my goddess. She is my queen, right? So as her daughter, as her eldest daughter, I've always looked at it as my job is to protect her, right? And to look after her and take care of her. So at the time, I was just starting my career in astrophysics, of all things, at college. And I saw what happened. And I said, listen, I've got a numbers brain. I can do this, right? Let's go figure out how to reduce the tax bill. Because this is ridiculous, right? So she had professional CPAs. She had financial advisors. She had this whole team. And all of them kept telling her, there's nothing else we can do. There's nothing else we can do. Well, yeah, as I started, little 18-year-old me, as I started digging into tax strategy and really focusing, and this was the deal, and I'm going to rip this thing apart, and I'm going to understand every in and out, every key factor, this strategy popped out, and this strategy popped out, and this strategy popped out, all these things that no one had ever told her. She's small business, general contractor, right? All of these things that small business owners can do that no one ever brought to her attention. And that's what really launched me on this path. 
but now I've been doing this now for about 25 years, long time. So now I definitely feel like that red-headed, fire-breathing dragon sitting on top of this pile of gold coins of tax strategies that I can apply to any business owner situation, any entrepreneur's situation. So it's kind of how we ended up here. So. Well, I mean, let's just state the obvious. Your passion Aww. shines through in that story. And I love that. I'm always looking for people. I mean, this is one of the reasons that this is a question that I ask. Like, I want to hear the heart side of why you're doing what you do. And I want to hear the passion behind it. We need to have passion. Well, I mean, so hopefully bad. we have passion yes. for the basics of what we do. <laughs> and then we can surround ourselves with people like you who are passionate about the other things. I'm super passionate about leadership and teams and I hate taxes, but I want to find the person. (laughs) Yes. The person who is passionate. Like we need to surround ourselves with people who are passionate about the tasks that they're going to be involved in for your business. I love that story. So thank you so much for sharing. I love it because this is important because man, the world needs you and you have a team of 65 I'm hearing, but so what current challenge stands in the way of you making your bigger, bolder impact, like an even bigger, bold, like getting to the billion, um, anything standing your way, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little coaching right now. So we're going to create some strategies, simple, implementable for you. And other people are going to be experiencing the same thing. So they're going to be gain benefit as well. So what's a current challenge that we can walk through? like it. Okay. Well, since you're a team with management and all the rest of it, so uh, we have- Communication and fighting friction. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, there's two. There's two. So I'll give you two and you pick whichever one is best. So one of them is most people, exactly what you said when we first started, right? Oh, I didn't know CPAs kind of did that, right? You sound more kind of like a CFO. So for a lot of people, they think CPA and they think about the green eye shades sitting at the desk doing the tax return, right? Not thinking mm-hmm. strategically, not thinking big picture, not doing whatever. So that is one thing that me and my team are trying to basically get the word out. Yes, we are CPAs. I mean, I am a CPA. I can do the tax returns, but that's not why you want to call us, right? You want us for tax strategy. And so many people don't have that in their life. So getting the word out there properly so that people understand that there is a difference and that we don't, we're not taking over the role of your CPA. If you've got a guy that you've loved for 30 years, keep the CPA preparing the tax return. Let us do the strategy and work with that person. So it becomes a team. So that's one. Okay. Of all right. Uh, Tell me the next one. The next I got one. Something, I got something for that already, though. <laughs> something okay, for that already. All right. I love it. <laughs> the second one is, so tax goddess, because of what we do and because the fact that we've now become started to become more and more known for this, for strategic tax coaching, we have effectively quadrupled our team size. You mentioned 65. We're actually, this morning's count was 78. So we've gotten a little bit bigger. It's kind of expanding and very yeah. rapidly expanding from that standpoint. So one of the people pieces. I think we've got a good management structure, but we are definitely having issues where you hire somebody, you think they're really good, and then they don't show up for the first, you know, they show up for the first couple of weeks and then they just kind of drop off the face of the planet. So uh, what's going through my mind is really a, a torn thing. Is this something with tax status only, or is this really a part of the quiet quitting rate resignation? We don't want to work thing that's going on in today. So okay. Side of it. <laughs> Yay. I love both of these. So the one's going to be super quick and I'm not a marketing strategist, but just from a business, I've been doing this for 30 years situation. <laughs> you talked about your branding of the tax goddess and that kind of reinforces people's preconceived notion of CPAs. And so what about a little tweak around that? Because then the next other things that you were further describing were tax strategy that you can lock arms with a, a CPA. Like, and I think that's also key because I've been working with small to medium size and family businesses for like 30 years. And so often they are just like glued to the hip attached, even if they're not doing a good job, they're like, I'm not dropping them. They were my brothers, such and such, you know, there's some kind yeah. of other connection at this point. Yeah. And it's, and it seems overwhelming and daunting to switch. And so you can come in and lock arms. So you talked more about like that tax strategy, coaching, tax strategy, all of that. So I'm thinking you need to do a tweak of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what, that's what comes first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So again, I'm not like you got marketing peeps, I'm sure just your team, <laughs> <Talk to> them. <laughs> you know, my favorite way to come up with, I'm probably too attached to alliteration. So I always try to, you know, 
defeat team drama. We got the D's from people problems to productivity. But anyway, so I get way too attached to that. But like, just do some brainstorming with your team around, and you've probably got it already written somewhere about what you actually do. And it's not just taxes, it's way beyond that. So you got to lead with that. All right. Okay. Now let's talk team. I have the seven keys to building your high performing team. So one, I want you to poke around in your hiring strategy and making sure that you're finding someone who's a fit. They need to be a fit. They have lots of other options right now. And so what is it that is extra valuable for you? What do you provide for them? So we're in a mark, a tight labor market. So it's not like, here's what you have to have. It's here's what we offer, but, and you're going to entice the right people through the language that you're using. That's going to be energetically aligned with the candidates that are going to be a better fit. So it's thinking about like you're a high energy firm. You focus on strategy, not taxes. There are some things that are going to be really enticing to the right people around those kinds of things. So think about what's unique about your, and of course, probably remote, I'm assuming. You're going to lead with what's unique and advantageous for the people that you want to hire. And then you're going to tell them what they need to have. But first, you're going to start with what you provide them. Got to do that right now. And just think creatively. It's kind of a marketing and sales thing right in that copy initially. All right. Point to bring my it, marketing team in with my HR team because yes, and then you think about what are the behaviors and personalities that are going to align with your team. Are you doing that? Are they using behavioral based interviewing? Yeah, we have a lot of people. We hire globally. Our team is in right. seventeen different countries. Right. <clears throat> We've been told that the behavioral testing does not work outside the U.S. Well, like it's not US testing. Test so it's question. It's just questions. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's, it's part of the interview process. It's not testing. It's using our brains to test though. But really what we're doing is we're asking questions that require someone to tell a story about what has happened, not what would happen or should happen. So it's not hypothetical. So for instance, if you want to, and you're listening for the passion in their voice when they tell you the story. So for instance, if you want someone who's high customer service, uh, and you know, in your example, it's going to be high strategy. Tell me about a time when. They almost always start about with, tell me about a time when. So customer service, just because I've used that one a lot. Tell me about a time when you went really above and beyond for a customer. What was the circumstance? And if you guys can't see me right now, Shauna can see me, but I'm holding up my fingers because there's going to be three parts to this. It's a triangle. But what was the circumstance? What did they do about it? And what was the outcome? So what? tell me about a time when you went above and beyond or created a really, you know, a creative tax strategy for a client. What was the circumstance? What did you do about it? And what was the outcome? As you're listening to the answer, again, you're looking for stay out of the woods, not W-O-O-D-S, the W-O-U-L-D-S. What I would do, you stop them. Oh, I'm actually wanting you to tell me a real story, not what you would do. Because if they've done it, they got a boatload of them. And if anything, they're sifting through to find the best one that they want to tell you. They don't have to go hypothetical. The other thing is if they start saying we, you need to stop and clarify because the we means maybe someone delegated it to them and it wasn't their creative thinking. So, oh, I hear you saying we, it sounds like multiple people worked on this. What part did you play? Did you initiate, Did you come up with a strategy who communicated it? Okay. And then the other thing is you want to hear the passion in their voice. Actually, I was helping to hire an accountant and this was the answer to, I don't remember actually the exact question, but it was around the behavioral based interviewing. And her answer was when things are like a few pennies off, it is like a treasure hunt to me. Lo and behold, she is the one who got hired, right? Cause like, okay, that is you want to hear. I am two pennies off and I'm going to find it. And it's a, and it's a joy, right? It is. I am passionate about like, to me, that is like, Right. But so, and sorry for everyone's ears for that. But anyway, so that's what you're looking for. The passion, like the story that you just told, that's what you want to hear. So it's their gifting. It's what they love. It's, you know, it's what they were put on this earth to do. So possibly again, I I only know generally that you got people leaving. So it might be that they're not a fit. People sense that they're not a fit. And if they have a lot of other options, they're going to go quickly. The other thing is your remote. What's your onboarding? How are they feeling a part of a lot of companies try to do ad hoc onboarding versus adding any amount of structure, feeling like too much structure is too much investment. So I'm not talking about like major onboarding, but I have a list of what they need to learn and track how they're going to learn it and track when they've learned it. Now you can 
schedule ahead of time when you're giving the updates. They need to know that they're doing a good job. They're already uncomfortable when they're learning new things and coming into a culture and then add in the remote aspect, like they probably feel disconnected. And so how is someone investing in them and showing that they're valuable and important to the team and that they're a part and they're uncomfortable because they're moving through a learning curve. If it gets to be a little too long and they feel like, oh my gosh, I should already know this. And they're just ad hoc asking questions as things come up. One, they start to feel uncomfortable. I'm not a fit. I should already know this stuff to the team members that they're poking holes in their schedules to go ask the random questions, start to think like, why wouldn't they already know this? Well, maybe they shouldn't because it didn't come up because you don't have any structure in your onboarding. So have some structure in the onboarding and include again, the investing in them, showing that they're valuable. They're not just another, and I'm not saying you're doing this, but just in general, I'm just, you know, that they're not just someone floating around out there. And then just what's the value you're adding, making sure to keep them busy and all of those kinds of things. You might need to look at the benefits that you're offering, which can be flexible and that, you know, if they were someone on their own and they're not good at bringing in the business, they don't want to sell, you keep selling that. We're giving you, the, you know, this, you're not having to do that, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, it's in the communication, it's in the training and it's in them helping them feel engaged and part of the team, ask them questions, ask how they're doing. I have a, he just turned 22. My 22 year old is working for a large company and he just hit his 90 days and they've done a good job of 30, 60, 90, telling him how he's doing, giving him reinforcement. It's, we expect that you'd still be learning at this point. Da, da, da. So does that help? It absolutely does. Thank you. Great points. Okay. If you have any other specific questions, there's a few other things, but those are some of the key ones that would, okay. that would help you avoid losing the people. Yay. So, Thank yay. you. Yeah. And I know other people listening are experiencing the same exact thing. So yeah, the quiet quitting thing, I'm just saying, it's just people have a lot of options. We don't even need to call it quiet quitting. It's just, you know, <laughs> we have more really options. Good. They're not, we don't have them with handcuffs. Like they got other options. So Very let's true. make your place be the option that has them stick. That they choose. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Yes, you are welcome. I want to ask now, what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make their own impact? Ooh. Well, we've already talked about passion, which is always my go-to number one, because if you don't love what you do, why are you doing it? Go find yeah. what you love what to do. I mean, yeah. period, right? And you're not going to have the tenacity to make it through tax season no. every year if you don't love oh. what you're doing for the, oh, base, no. the business. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, and it brings up a very good point. I remember way back when I first started, you know, you don't get to do strategy right off the bat, right? I mean, you research it in the background, but you start off being a tax preparer. I hated being a tax preparer hated it. I don't like preparing taxes. It's boring. It's recording history, right? Same thing with accounting for me, right? You said bookkeeping, that two cents would drive me insane. And this is why we have people on the team that love this and do that's what they do. But it wasn't until I found tax strategy that my passion level kicked up and I went, oh, now I can make a difference in somebody's life. Now I can actually use my skill set, my knowledge to do something proactive for somebody in advance before they get hit with this IRS bill. Yeah, absolutely. The passion, I mean, if you don't have it, keep searching, right? Keep looking. So um, good. Yes. And then the only other one is my favorite Master Yoda, right? Do or do not, there is no try. So either it is or it isn't work or it's not. I mean, there, there's nothing in between. There's no maybe, there's no kind of, there's no should have. You either did or you didn't. And there you go. So. Love it. It's so funny. Again, you can see me, people listening to the podcast can't see me, but when I'm with people, I hold up my pen and I say, or I have them hold up a pen and say, try to put it down. And then they put it down and I'm like, no, try right. to put it down. <laughs> try to put it down. So yeah, because obviously in coaching, if I'm trying to hold them accountable and yeah, you know, like your word, it has to mean something for integrity and that's a part of it. And so commit uh, yeah, uh, and then do. Yep. There is no try, give it a whirl. Mm -mm, that is, yeah. I mean, we can say yes to anything if we're just going to give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> There's a so, lot of worlds to be had. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shauna, tell me people who want to connect with you, how do they find you and how do they, like what might be going on in their life right now or in their business that would entice them? Like this is what they need to do right now. So let's tell that story. And then to what do they do to connect with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Figuring out why you would want to talk to somebody like me is pretty easy. Are you frustrated with how much money you have paid or about to pay to the government? That's really the answer, right? Um, you know, we get a lot of calls from people out of the high tax states, California, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, some of these higher tax states. But really, it's you've bought a business, or you've sold a business, you have sold some crypto, you have made much more money 
this year, right? We COVID was a strange time for everybody. Some businesses tanked, some businesses skyrocketed, right? Just depending on what industry you were in. So really anytime that you're looking at paying more money to the government for something, if it's not the end of the year, you have time to do something about it, right? So at this point, we've got, I don't know, another couple of months at least to go do something about your tax burden for 2022. So if that's something you're looking at, and probably one of the most common examples is people go to their CPA because they've had that relationship for 30 years and say, you know, Bob, CPA, I want to reduce my taxes. What do I do? And Bob, the CPA says, buy a car and donate to your 401k. Those are great, right? Those are, I'm not saying those are bad strategies, but that's two out of about 400 that you could use. So what other things is your CPA just not trained to even tell you about? Because they're trained as a CPA, their job is to keep you out of jail, right? I don't want to be audited and I don't want to go to jail. That's their job. File that tax term, right? Ooh, that's that's that bar. I like, yeah, I like to set the bar higher. <laughs> set the bar higher, right? So yeah, as a strategist, one of the most powerful questions that we ask as a strategist is, listen, there's a scale for tax strategy. Okay, and that scale goes from zero to 10. Zero meaning the IRS never calls you never ever, but you're leaving money on the table, right? 10 meaning we're all going to jail. So where do you want to sit on that scale, right? Most entrepreneurs, most business owners tend to sit at a six, seven, eight. I've had a few that tell me 20 and I have to pull them back a little bit. Like I'm not going to jail. You seem very nice, but no, we're not. I don't look good in orange. I'm a redhead. It's not happening. But knowing where you are on that scale and then also knowing where your professional team is on that scale, because there's a big difference. If you're an entrepreneur and you're an eight, but your CPA is a two, even if you did a strategy, they're not going to sign off on that tax term. So you have to match, right? You were talking about the team and it has to be a good fit. And you all have to be thinking the same thing and on the same path. It's the same thing. Your financial team, if you're at an eight and they're at a two, you're never going to be able to take advantage of tax strategies. So not all of them anyway. That's a really good thought. I have never heard anyone describe it that like, like we think of that in terms of investing. They take the, the temperature of our risk tolerance. Yeah. But I feel like we, at least I haven't heard of thinking that of that in terms of strategy. Nobody and, has. And the risk we're working on, it's and been finding copyrighted. A match. Exactly. It's copyrighted and we're working on the trademark. <laughs> like, yeah, you're a thousand percent right. It's nobody's ever asked the question. Most people go to a CPA's office and like, yeah, okay, I like the guy and he seems reasonable and logical and pricing is good or whatever. Yeah, but you and them are never having this conversation about where you want to be and where are they? Because we've seen cases the other way too, where we've seen air quotes, bad CPAs doing some bad stuff and they're really pulling level 15, like everybody's going to jail kind of stuff, but you're the one signing that tax turn and you might be a level two and you had no idea. Right. Yeah. So it's, in my opinion, one of the most powerful questions that you can ask your financial team and say, well, where are you? Where am I? Where's my spouse? This happens a lot where you get the entrepreneur spouse who's like an eight or a nine or a 10, no tens, but an eight or a nine, 9.5. Right. And then you get the W2 employee spouse who's like, no, I'm like a zero. And you've got to, you've got to get the two of them. Well, where do you want to be? You want to be at like a four or a six or a nine or like, what do you want to do here? So it's actually a really, really powerful question that nobody asks. That's really good. Yeah, you're right. They don't. And luckily, I, uh, my husband and I are both entrepreneurs. So we, we tend to be pretty similar in our risk tolerance. But yeah, we have not been asked that question around tech stuff. So yep. very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Shauna. I have oh, really enjoyed the conversation. Okay. And again, if you want to connect with Shauna, oh yeah, that's the next part. Why don't you say your links and all of that? Where they, where Absolutely. They well, I'm super easy to find tax goddess. If you look up tax goddess, so tax goddess, T-A-X-G-O-D-D-E-S-S.com. That's our website. It's our Instagram, our TikTok, our YouTube, it's it's all the thing. So Tax Goddess is super easy to find, headquartered in Arizona and yeah, help client across the entire US. And yeah, it's fun stuff. So 
Awesome. So those links will also be in notes from today. You'll be able to find those by going to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast tab and go to episode 304. We'll have the links there. And again, a summary of what we just chatted about. And I'm sure that last little question, the, the food for thought will be a part of those notes. So thanks for joining. And if you really kind of heard some stuff in that team talk that we just did, and you're struggling in that same area, grab a spot on my calendar. I would love to chat with you. Go to my impact academy.com forward slash book call. And yeah, it's that simple. Grab 30 minutes on my calendar. Let's chat, take some next steps, see how I can help. All right. And get out there. You were put on this earth for an amazing reason. Get out there, make your bolder impact. And Sean is going to help you keep more of your money while you do that. All right. Thank you. 